Hey everybody, Frankie Day here. Okay guys, <coughs> uh, tonight's video is uh, a first update for the Love of Freddy group build uh, featuring my Reve uh, monogram Ravel V24D Liberator and 148 scale. Uh, Warren and I, we, uh, he messaged me about, about the group build and everything like that. And uh, he's participating in it too, I imagine. And, uh, and uh, we did discuss we're going to go ahead and kind of postpone the Typhoon buddy build until after we get Freddy's uh, build out of the way. Because this is a special, uh, you know, group build uh, for Freddy and everybody and Owen. And uh, so at least being able to do is uh, fulfill this uh, group build and, and uh, catch up a lot of stuff on the side here. I may have some videos coming up this week. Uh, so I've been on this thing for about a couple days and... Uh, as reviewed from the last video, it had, it's all molded in, in like a some kind of dark green plastic, and and that black plastic, that green plastic, is tough and hard to, to model with when it's uh, when it's dark, like that. Especially in placing and fitting uh, your your interiors details. So uh, yeah, I did. I went ahead and um, and primed the inside of the few most fuselages insides and also I did the uh, the vertical horizontal stabilizer the twin tails and the, and the stabilizer it's all prime sanded and uh, actually I was doing some dry fitting I was really really ain't that much feeling to do on this kid I was very I was really astounded by it I was really hoping so oh, man I hope there ain't, ain't no big old gaps coming out on the uh, side of the uh, uh, where the engines where the nacelles are at when they join when the wings has joined together sometimes they present those hideous looking gaps so takes a lot of sanding here and there just to get them down but after dry fitting both wings it's not that bad there's like just a smidgen of a filler here and there but in other words that it's not bad at all and I'm glad she's not a filler queen so that's a that's great relief okay but as far as I got on this guys um, we'll, we'll, call, we'll take the camera swing it over and take a look at this uh, so far um, all I did guys is just go ahead and uh, Got all the interior parts in place. The cockpit floor is not glued down yet. The reason being is because I need that as a unit so I can do some detail painting and add more washers to it inside of it. The inside is going to be a, a chromate green, zinc chromate green, the inside of it, and add with some wash to it and everything and pick out some details. Uh, the bomb racks have been glued in place, uh, the waste gunner compartment has been glued in place. And uh, you got a couple ready boxes that actually are, are in place uh, where ammunition stores are at. So actually, virtually all it needs to do be do now is go ahead and start uh, airbrushing inside of the interiors using this uh, Model Master Zinc Chromate Grain. And uh, so I'll go ahead and airbrush that tomorrow. And when it dries, I'll add some more to and also do some details on it. And uh, make a video of that before I button up the fuselage. So anyway, I'm doing something with B24. It was sitting on top of my stash pile up there. And uh, since uh, Martin, uh, the host of this great group built for Freddy, um, made it, made it uh, to a public opinion and everything. And, that way I'll be able to uh, we get started on this group build so I always join in too as quick as I can and be able to uh, get this going so I'm gonna this thing's gonna probably take me a couple good weeks to build till it's done and let me start on on the part another one the B25 that he gave me the 148 scale it's up there in the, to the box top to the liberator set inside there it's a hundred percent complete and uh, before I, st when I started that one, I'll make a video of that too as well. So we'll take the camera, we'll swing around, take a look at this, and I'll discuss how much progress we've done on since uh, uh, the introduction of the kit for, the, for Freddy's group build here. Okay, guys, right here, the camera's pretty friendly, like she always is. I got the horizontal stabilizers all primed up. They were sanded quite well on the mating edges where they were glued together. Same thing with the stabilizer, it's been primed. And uh, leading trailing edges have been sanded down. And uh, gave us this first coat of priming. And also on the fuselage right here, as you can see, I 
I've got the cocktail on there. All pieces are all there, but right now, folks, I just need to uh, to be able to go ahead and uh, paint that zinc chromate green on there. We just probably get on that. This thing here just comes off right there, and so I can be able to do my detailing in there, and then uh, before I button it up, and uh, same thing on the on the port fuselage. It's done in the same manner, and. Uh, that's about as far as I got on it, folks. I had to take all the parts out of the kit box. I, I gave it a good bath and wash. So what I'm going to do right now, why, I'm going to go ahead and start on the fuselage tomorrow. Give this all air brush zinc chromate green. And uh, once zinc, zinc chromate green has been uh, applied, I'm going to go ahead and start painting on the details and add the wash last. And uh, I'm going to add the crew figures too as well. I'm going to paint them up. And I'm adding to the kit. I think Panzerman Bill, uh, Panzerman's Bunker, will enjoy this with great delight, knowing that there's this Liberator has has a pilot in there, and his co-pilot and the bombardier. This uh, this kit really has not changed that much since its release back in 1977. Uh, the original V24. That was released by Monogram in 1977 uh, was the J model with the two Bennett with the Bendix turret instead of the regular greenhouse uh, nose with the B24D incorporated. <clears throat> and um, I've got some builder's plans of this, so I'm going to start de detailing of that a little bit. I may add some more details to it, like the navigator over here, he stands over here, and the bottom there sits right about here. And you got your radio operators over here, but one thing that the, that the company failed to do is add all the, uh, the the radio boxes to this kit. And without the radio boxes and such, you know, it's yeah, it's it leaves a lot to for the scratch builder to go ahead and uh, put it in himself, which I probably will be end doing. But anyway, guys, uh, this is going to be about a good couple of weeks to have it done. And I did some thinking, folks. Uh, one of my commenters right there, God bless his heart and soul. He uh, got my attention. I was thinking, instead of, uh, I'm going to deviate away from the color schedule was indicated on the instruction manual. I want to go ahead and make this the, the Polesti uh, Raider back in Romania, the oil, the oil fields. It's going to be painted in this color right here, which is Desert Pink, Model Masters. I went there, I took this Model Master paint out, and I did, I took it out of a jar and, and had a drop. A drop of red. There's a tiny drop of red to give it the, the pink hues of the desert as a, as a, as dusk prevails over the desert. So the other side is going to be uh, going to be a medium gray, and the top surface is going to be desert sand. And uh, so this is going to be a beautiful looking liberator. And I got some. I think I got some. Uh, some nose art decals inside my decals box. I have to pick an inventory out and see what I can use on this. I, of course, the, airplanes, the, the airplane itself is going to be fictitious as, as squadron colors, I mean, with the pedigree insignia on it. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to make it the, uh, the, the Polesti uh, uh, Raider uh, using original markings. Uh, the kit, the decals, uh, which is uh, Jerks Natural, that was used in Polesti. So I may go ahead and use that decal. And uh, so, whatever it's going to be, it's going to be all right, guys, when I get finished with it, because uh, the B-24 looks really pretty with desert with, with desert pink. The bottom was stationed in Benghazi, and uh, they were used during the Palestine raids. And the B-24 Liberator was a very successful bomber for a time, and there's a lot of rivalry between uh, the B-24 and B-17 crews. But the B-24 Liberator was a one hell of an airplane. It was an airplane that was much needed because the B-17 was starting to be obsolete until it proved itself over Hitler's Europe, how, how successful it was and how, how dedicated it was for its crews and how dependable for airworthiness to be able to bring the crews and the aircraft back itself and could sustain a lot greater amount of damage and still keep flying and bring its crews back. So that won the hearts of the air crews right there, and the B-17 was kept throughout the war. 
and the B-24 Liberator, it had its share of problems too. I think one of the biggest problems with the Liberator was was nose gear, nose gear failures. Uh, it was probably doing from this, from abuse from the pilot, from from hitting uh, hard parts of the of the tarmac or the, uh, of the runway, the sand runway, what they used. And uh, another another feature, another vulnerable feature was a design flaw, which was never realized probably until actually end of the war. And it, a lot of B twenty B seven B twenty four liberators, the most vulnerable part was the was the wing, a big old Davis uh, or Spencer wing it had. And when the bomb A doors uh, open, uh, an F thirty one ninety would take a pretty good. Take a crack shot at it and go right through the bomb bay and hit that spar. You break that spar, those wings will come right off. They just till it snap, and that was the most vulnerability part of the B-24 Liberator. <clears throat> Other than that, the B-24 Lib can uh, really take some damage. It was used as anti-submarine bombers because it had a range of 3,000 miles. That's one thing about the Liberator that was such a very wonderful airplane. It had the it had the mileage that you could be able to uh, fly in admissions. Uh, the English used them a lot as far as, as coastal command aircraft. We worked with the U-boat fleets and destroyed a lot of the uh, German U-boats and, and convoys and such. And also uh, the United States Navy used them as, as, as PP-24Ys. Two, uh, two four-wise. And the core, the core, a lot of this thing has the Coronado, the PP-2I Coronado, the flying boat. Actually, this thing was designed as, uh, based off the PP-2Y Coronado flying boat, especially with the two tails they have on here. Okay, guys, we'll take this camera, swing it about over here to me, and uh, we'll finish up the video right here. Okay, here I is again, yours truly. And uh, that'll be it right there. Okay, guys, uh, that'll be it right there. It's kind of like a it's an update number one for for Love of Freddy's group build. I'm very honored to do his build for him. And uh, this aircraft he gave me last year, along with four others. I'm uh, very delighted and mostly appreciated for what he does and for his for his wonderful candor and also his wonderful heart of gold that he has. And very generous gentleman he is. God love him though. And thank you, Freddie, very much for this liberator, buddy. I'm building it right here, buddy. Right here, just for you. And I'd like to thank Martin for hosting it. And uh, so we got a lot of good builds coming up, folks. We got everybody's attention on this one. And Freddie deserves it. Okay, guys, it's time to get off right here. Uh, next video we'll have will probably be another up be the update of the uh, the completed interior details of this B-24 for our button up the fuselage. And the rest of the uh, updates will follow as I go along. Okay, guys, it's time for you to get out of here right now. I'm about ready to uh, smoke a cigar, get it down, watch a couple of movies, and go to bed. I'm a little tired. And uh, we'll catch you great guys on the next video, so stay tuned for update number two. For the love of Freddy's group build. Featuring the Ravel Monogram B24D Liberator at 148 scale. This is Frankie Day signing off. God bless you guys. Make Mama happy. And please subscribe. Stay tuned. See you boys.